Hey friends, today we are hanging out in Walt Disney's hometown of Marceline, Missouri. Citizen Watch and the Walt Disney Hometown Museum invited me out to celebrate a moment in time in honor of 100 years of Disney and Marceline. They're going to have an awesome street fair, a clock dedication ceremony, and then we're going to have dinner on the Walt Disney Family Farm. I am so excited for this. We're going to eat some food and walk in Walt's footsteps and have a beautiful Marceline kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. And look at this, the original Main Street USA, right here in Marceline. This is exactly what Walt pictured when he decided to make the Main Street USA and all of his theme parks. And this is uh, his inspiration. We're here, look at this, it's so amazing. Walt loved Marceline and he uses it as an inspiration for a lot of the things that he has created over time. Main Street USA, uh, The Lady and the Tramp. I mean, this is literally one of his favorite places. And over on the family farm, there is a tree there and it's called the Dreaming Tree. And Walt likes to credit that as the birthplace of his creativity. Like, isn't that amazing? And we're going to be having dinner on that that farm later on tonight. We are gonna be having dinner on the Disney family farm. Just look at this quote from Walt right here. More things of importance happened to me and Marceline than have happened since or likely to in the future. So that's what I mean by he really did love Marceline. It is really amazing how much you can see the resemblance to Main Street USA here. Like, honestly, you can see, like, certain buildings. Like, for instance, over here, there is a Coca-Cola mural where Walt actually drew his inspiration for the refreshment corner on Main Street uh, USA in Disneyland. And then over here was a confectionery. This was a confectionery. Now it is a... Uh, Corner Cafe, Ma Vicks, they have little signs on the buildings that actually like tell you what like Walt was like picturing, like what was there at that time. And look, you can even see it right here. Confectionery, located at this site in the Allen Hotel block built in 1905, was a favorite stop for Marcelinans. This is such a small town with only a population of 2,500 people and it's about an hour and 45 minutes away from Kansas City. So we flew into Kansas City and then rented a car and drove down here and it is just so beautiful. I love everything about this place. On the back side of the First National Bank, they have this little mural here for Main Street USA. Look how beautiful this mural is. Got a little Walt Disney quote there. Welcome to Main Street USA. I love that. Wow, Casey's General Store. Then they have the Delaney Funeral Home, the Santa Fe going through there. This is that. This is really cool. They even have Dollar General up there. Look, you can see Dollar General. Walt Disney's hometown of Marceline today is much as it was when he lived here. The first plans of Disneyland show a remarkable resemblance to the town with its storefronts on Main Street and locomotives coming and going. And you can literally hear the, like, the trains coming and going all day long. I can hear it right now. And isn't this just so magical? Like, I really love it. Welcome to the original Main Street USA. Just a little bit further down Main Street, they have buildings like the First National Bank. They have a VFW over here. They've got a hardware shop on the other side in Allstate. This is just so cool and I love the crosswalks and everything. We have a whole bunch of different things scheduled for the day. Right now it's kind of early and we're just free roaming around, but I definitely need to get some coffee and breakfast. And the best place to do that is right here on Main Street USA in a little diner slash cafe. And that just sounds perfect to me. I think it's time for us to get some breakfast and coffee at Ma Vic's Corner Cafe. Look at this place. I'm excited and it's right across the street from the park where the street fair is gonna happen. So we're gonna be able to get some breakfast and some coffee and then do some shopping. 
this is honestly exactly what a small town diner looks like or a cafe look at the boots they've got the uh, specials on the board over there tower of terror special for 10.99 and then also all the mickey mouse drawings you see everything over there we'll explore around a little bit but we're having breakfast with some friends Hi. look at this good morning good morning just hanging out with marceline <laughs> right of all places to like meet up with everybody. Yeah. It's, so cool. Cool. it's too cool. I love it here. <laughs> it's so funny because when we got into town last night, we came to a little spot around the corner to have a late dinner, and the waitress that was taking care of us at the restaurant around the corner for dinner is actually the waitress that's taking care of us for breakfast here at the cafe. And that's like such a small small town thing. Like I said, only 2,500 people live here and I think that's amazing. Like, it's really cool. Here is a look at the menu. They've got biscuits and gravy, which is a must. They also have French toast and a huge cinnamon roll. So I think we're gonna do that. I mean, we gotta try all of the specials, you know? Take a look at this gigantic cinnamon roll and it's drenched in icing and butter. You're gonna you're gonna share some of this with me, right? Are we just diving in here? Well, I don't need a spoon. I need a fork. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, yo, plastic spoon. All right. So, what are we just gonna just fork it in? Go for it. Oh my lanta. Where's my fork? You have I might have stole your fork. It's in the coffee. Here's a fork. It's in the coffee. Okay, perfect. It's like having a cinnamon roll as an appetizer for breakfast. That's the way that, and I'm here for it. Sorry, is there anything wrong with a lot of butter? That is so good. Much too good. Much too good for children. And now it's time for the main event, the biscuits and gravy. I ordered the half order and it's huge. Look at this. And then here's my American potatoes or American fries. And then one single slice of French toast and some eggs and sausage. This is a huge meal. I wasn't expecting it to be this big, but uh, I'm diving in. These biscuits and gravies are amazing. Doesn't it sound funny the way I just said that? I mean, a these little bit. biscuits and gravies. But you're, they're so good, though. You're yeah. Up your words. I really do love it. It is. It's exactly like a buttery, buttery bakey flaky, a buttery bakey flaky biscuit. That's the way. I love seeing some of these photos inside of the cafe here and even some of the artwork too. Like look at this one of Walt and Roy Disney fishing at Yellow Creek right down the road here. Look at that. This is so cool looking. I want to go fishing there now and there's tons of them. I am completely full. I ordered way too much food and now it's time to go out and explore around the city and make our way to all of the festivities. I can't wait to do some shopping because as we're sitting here, I'm watching like all the people set up their booths and tables and it looks like there's some really cool items that I might be purchasing today. I think we're gonna make our way over to the Walt Disney Post Office. Walt Disney has its own post office and they're doing a special cancellation uh, like stamp. And uh, we're gonna go wander over there first because they're not completely set up for this. I don't think this starts till 12, but it looks like there's a lot of people in there. So maybe we'll cut through, but I wanna come back when it's fully open. Citizen Watch is going to be donating a replica of their famous timepiece that's on Main Street USA in the Magic Kingdom and uh, they're throwing like a big block party. They're having a major celebration. D23 is here. They sold tickets so you can actually come to this event and also, also the Walt Disney uh, Hometown Museum was selling tickets to the event. So it's really cool that a lot of people traveled from all around the world to come to Marceline. We made our way up to the Walt Disney Hometown Museum and look at how awesome this place is. Right inside the courtyard, this is where they are going to be dedicating the new clock tower from Citizen. This is an exact replica from the parks. Look at this. I think this was an old train station. I think that's why uh, you might hear trains because they actually drive by or they come by right here. And this is so awesome. Wow, look at that. It looks just like the one. 
in the parks like that is so awesome dedicated to the walt disney hometown museum june 3rd 2023 that is today the official timepiece of the walt disney world resort citizen this is actually the start of a kind of long road trip for me. I know I have been basically all over the world the past couple months and it's it's so crazy for me to say that, but I've been getting these amazing opportunities to come and showcase some awesome places that I personally want to discover for myself and I want to show it and share it with you guys. So this is just the start and uh, I'm going to be going to a couple of other really awesome stops and maybe a trip back home we're gonna be coming up here later on for the clock dedication and I hear we're gonna be having some special guests join us but for the moment I kind of want to just go into the uh, Walt Disney hometown museum and just show you some of the cool things they have inside here I could walk through this museum and point out every single thing because there are so many amazing things to show you guys, but I probably wouldn't have time for that. So I highly suggest you guys coming and checking it out. And now I just want to show you a couple of the ones that they, they were just really cool. You know, they were, this is the stuff I'm like, I get excited. Look at how amazing this place is. There is so many pieces of Disney history in here. It's incredible. In fact, uh, Walt's sister, uh, she actually chose Marceline for her collection. Isn't that cool? In early 1999, Ruth Disney selected Marceline to showcase her collection of family memorabilia. So this is straight from the Disney family. This is such an awesome piece right here because it always reminds you that you have to take care of family. And this TV right here is a piece of Disney history because when uh, Walt was doing the opening ceremony for Disneyland, the dedication, he invited his sister Ruth down to the dedication, but she didn't like big crowds and she didn't have a TV. So instead, Walt sent her money to go out and buy this TV so that she can sit down and watch the dedication of Disneyland in 1955. And this is the exact rug and everything. Like this is the same setup they had in, in the family house to watch the dedication and they preserved it right here. You can see some Walt Disney autographed lithographs here of Mickey Mouse and Tinkerbell. And then look at this uh, new Fantasyland banner right here. That is awesome. I love all of this stuff. This is all like just Disney treasures, everything. Look at the Davy Crockett outfit right here. Wow. And then as you walk around, you'll find a lot more. And I'll point out things. I mean, it's massive in here. Obviously, you know, Walt loved his trains. And they actually uh, have a whole entire, like, section of uh, the Carrollwood Pacific. Like, the actual track. That's, that's priceless. Normally, I would say some of these items belong in a museum, but they're actually in a museum. They're in the Walt Disney Hometown Museum. Honestly, I feel like this right here is probably the coolest pieces or the coolest thing that they have in this whole museum and that's because these are uh, two Mickey uh, Mouse dolls that Walt and Roy actually gave to their parents on their 50th wedding anniversary. So Walt and Roy, this was their present to their parents. Isn't that, that's like so, that's so, so awesome. Look at them. They got, I mean, that's priceless. I love looking at all of these uh, pieces of canvas art where it shows Walt visiting Marceline. Look at this, like Walt and Roy walking down the streets there. Walt and Roy at the trains and there's kids coming up to them. This is a cool shot right here. Very, very awesome. They're even reading like the Marceline paper. And then you have him in a garage right here. And this is an awesome one right here. This is Walt and Roy at the Dreaming Tree on their family farm. Like I mentioned, Walt was a huge fan of Marceline and there were talks of a Disney theme park 
to happen in Marceline and here are some of the plans that they were working on and some of this stuff is so amazing just the history behind it uh, just like uh, in Florida Walt started up buying land but he used uh, a different name and it was Retlaw which is Walter spelled the backwards and uh, he was gonna do kind of like a uh, attraction of the you know his boyhood hometown and it was really cool because this right here is a sketch that Walt actually made himself and that you can see this is all Walt's like sketches like his handwriting property not owned motel inside pool fishing right, yes. lake all of this cool stuff. As you can see right here, the uh, origin sketches of the Marceline project were penned by the hand of Walt Disney himself, and they remained on his Burbank studio desk until his death in 1966, a short five months before the project groundbreaking for the park that would transform his beloved hometown. Isn't that like, wow. Can you even imagine? Look at this would have been like, Main Street USA, the shops and everything, the pool, he had it all. Sadly, the theme park in Marceline never happened, but it does have a Disney attraction here, and it's the only place where an actual Disney attraction continued on being an attraction outside of Disney parks, and it is so cool. And I give to you the Marceline Autopia. Look at this. This was an attraction in Disneyland and they closed it to make way for It's a Small World and Disney donated it to Marceline. And isn't that so cool? In 1966, Walt donated to Marceline the children's ride Midget Autopia, the only Disneyland ride ever moved elsewhere. That's awesome. And now, because we're here for this special event, they actually have it outside running. I don't know if we can ride it, but we're going to be able to see it in action. I think we might be too big. Yeah, you might be too big. I know I'm not fitting in that. <laughs> that is so cool, though. The Walt Disney Hometown Museum is privately funded. So if you ever want to consider donating, I'm going to put a link in the description. They also, like I said, they sell tickets to private events like this and they have merchandise and stuff like that. So I'll put a link in the description. This is really something that I feel like needs to be preserved. And I'm so happy that there are individuals that are out there that stepped in and said, we're gonna keep this alive so if you want to donate I'll put the link in the description and look at that EP Ripley Park and the Midget Autopia Wow this is beautiful though this is right along the Main Street USA actually like Main Street USA is right on the other side of the park there and this is where the street fair is happening so we'll go over there but I saw this and I had to come over immediately oh wow the Midget Autopia actually ran in this very park from 1966 to 1977 and then when Marceline decided to retire Walt and Roy's gift they kept a like little walking path so that uh, you can always uh, go on the attraction and for this special event they brought in some kind of replicas that uh, you can actually drive like these aren't the opening day cars but they're really close to it that's so awesome. Oh, look. Oh, I'm standing on the track, actually. I'm so used because this is just a walking track. Look at how cool the train is coming by right now. What? Walt would have loved this. Ah! Oh, that's a long train, too. I said Walt would have loved this. Wow. That is cool. That is cool. It looks like there's a lot of incredible food stands over here, but we already had breakfast this morning. There's also a barbecue stand over there, and then we had dinner at the Walt Disney Family Farm later on. So we don't want to get too much, but I definitely want to check out some things. Maybe a nice, cold, refreshing lemonade or a mint julep. How cool would that be? Now it's time to go explore around the street fair, and it's really cool because you get to meet the voice <laughs> of Mickey Mouse. Sean has been picking up this sign so much. Sean, you're doing in the work for a citizen right here. 
Oh yeah, and Brett. But yeah, you get to meet Brett, the voice of Mickey Mouse here today inside the park. Very cool. <laughs> oh, and a train's coming again. A train again. A lot of trains coming. A lot of trains. <laughs> oh, look at that lemonade. Shake it up. Oh, holy moly. I forgot that they had the animatronics exhibit here too. Look at. Wow. That's incredible. Here we go, the lemonade shake up. We've got kettle corn back there. Look at how they squish down the lemons. Oh, look at that, add the blackberries in there. And then they shake it up. Wait till you see the shake up machine. I've been waiting to see the shake machine. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> it's so fun. We got ourselves our lemonades. Look at the size of these though. That's good stuff. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Marceline. Lemonade. It's so good. <laughs> this is a good lemonade, let me tell you. Yeah. I knew oh. I saw it. Look at that. Amazing. <laughs> wow, it's so refreshing. It's, it's so good. Oh, it's, it's perfect. Now I think since we have a little bit of time before we have to go to one of the presentations, I kind of just want to stroll along Main Street. They got a radio station over there. Just go up and down because I think there are stands like they have like outside the vendors. Yeah, the they do. Yeah, they have outside vendors. So let's just go walk up and down Main Street a little bit. Of course, they do have the street closed off at some points, but I have to just be able to walk right down the middle of Main Street, USA. Look at this. Marceline City Hall on the left there. Just like we're at Disneyland or Dis uh, Main Street. Yep, there's the uh, Maytag uh, Home Air Appliance Center right there. <laughs> Just like in the parks. Surprisingly, it is kind of hot and humid here in Missouri. I thought it was gonna be a little bit colder than Florida, but it, I feel like it's the same temperature. Right here is the Uptown Theater, and this is actually really cool because this opened in 1930, and in 1956, Walt and Roy Disney held the Midwest premiere of their feature film, The Great Locomotive Chase, in this theater. And then they also came back, and in 1998, the Walt Disney uh, Company held another premiere here for The Spirit of Mickey, and that was such a cool, like, uh, uh, premiere they actually have still some of the original signs and so many people came to Marceline actually 18,000 people came to Marceline to see the premiere of the spirit of Mickey and we're gonna be able we're gonna be able to actually go inside and tour it even though it's it, it's definitely seen better days and here we go look at this place you can see goofy on the walls Wow This is nifty. Look at you. Know, it looks like a, a a bug in there. Look at this. Yeah, it's. I've had it air and out, but it all back up. This is really cool. You are standing in a 1930 uh, film or uh, theater, and this was created combining two buildings. Into the Great Locomotive Chase, premiered the Midwest premiere of it, and then in 1998. The Disney Company came back and they said, hey, we're going to do the spirit of Mickey here as well. So that's our Disney connection. Uh, we are looking forward, hopefully, we're, it might be a little ambitious, but we're looking for uh, an o reopening. We're keeping it all the same. You uh, will see a picture of him in the museum. He's pointing up toward the right. As the historian, I can make up every once in a while. I can make up a story and, and claim something that's not true. And my untruth here is he's pointing at that uh, clock up there that you can barely see and saying, I want it, but the owner said no. Oh, <laughs> so Walt stood on that stage yeah, right up right there. there. Yep. That's incredible. Yeah, when you look at the, this one, but, uh, Yeah, right there's the stage. So Walt was standing on that stage right yes, there. And that was the stage that we were just looking at. That's kind of cool. Was this him coming out of the theater too? No, that's, I, we believe that that's right before. He was right out front here. Yeah. They had a big uh, welcome yeah. home to Walt and Roy sign. Yeah. Everybody clocked around him. That's awesome. 
going into the Uptown Theater was pretty iconic. I loved it in there. It smelt old in there just like it looks on the outside is exactly how it smells and uh, now it's time to go to the first presentation of the evening and this is going to be about d23 and then also the city of marceline and this is where some of uh, the special guests will be coming hopefully fingers crossed that's what we heard to invite a few friend, familiar friends up to help us out with our next token of gratitude so uh, please join me as in recognition of this anniversary as a gift to the city of Marceline. Uh, we would like to invite Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. Marceline is proud to host the 2023 D23 event in honor of 100 years of the Walt Disney Company. Now, therefore, the city of Marceline, Missouri, I, Sally Buck, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Marceline, Missouri, do hereby declare that on this date, June 3, 2023, Honorary citizenship is bestowed to all D23 members worldwide and further proclaimed today to be D23 Day. In oh, look at that. Hiya, pal. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Oh, you guys are the best. I love it when they're lovey-dovey. <laughs> wow, that was so amazing. <laughs> I had no idea Mickey and Minnie were going to make an appearance today and that was so cool. Now they are honorary citizens of Marceline and I am too. Any D23 member is an honorary citizen of Marceline and this is officially June 3rd D23 day. Wow, that was epic seeing that. And then Mickey and Minnie coming up to me at the end once they got off the stage with the train. Priceless. Priceless I say. We're going to take a quick break and head back to our hotel because we have to get ready for the clock uh, dedication ceremony and then uh, dinner on the Walt Disney Farm. But we wanted to show you our sweet Dodge Challenger, a bunch of Midwest boys, American Muscle, American right muscle okay, in Missouri. America. Look at this. Just the way Walt would have wanted it. <laughs> Just the way Walt would have wanted it. Since we had to leave and head back to our hotel, I wanted to drive out to another really awesome spot that's not really close to Marceline, but has a lot to do with Disney history. And that is to the laugh o -Graham Studios where Walt had his first studio. This is about, uh, about an hour away and the physical location is still there. And uh, it's, it's, been, it's, it's seen better days. And here it is, Laugh-O-Gram Studios, or what's left of it. It definitely has seen better days. But you can see a little bit of like, it looks like drawings, like there's a Goofy up in that window right there. And then the main window here, you can actually see uh, a picture of young Walt. That's what it looks like. This is really, really cool. So much history in this building right here. Wow, I don't know what they're doing to it. I'm hoping, you know, somebody's trying to preserve this. Like, a, like they should, somebody should be trying to preserve this and keep it kind of a, in original state. I don't know what's happening with it though. Look at this, another little uh, sign here. Walt Disney in Kansas City. Wow, this must have been maybe the entrance. This is so cool. Alongside the building here. You can see more. Oh, yeah, there's another picture of Walt right there. I'm just looking at everything, and people keep on stopping to take photos. Like, it's a big deal. Like, look, look at that guy over there. 
How awesome was it that we got to go to the Laugh-O-Gram Studios? It's really amazing being able to do all this incredible stuff and seeing this Disney history. I'm honestly speechless and it's really hard for me to kind of focus on the fact that I'm making a video this time because I am so zoned in on everything. But now we're heading back to Marceline and then we're going to go and uh, see the clock dedication and then dinner at the Walt Disney Family Farm. That's a, that's <laughs> wow. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Well, there it is. The clock has been officially dedicated. I love this. This is really cool, and it's, it looks so beautiful. Right outside here. Right in the garden. It is so nice. Like, wow. And it's so cool because I would normally see this on the left and then see a castle right down the middle. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I like it's kind of lined up perfect with Marceline right here. And I, I didn't really think of that. Like, wow, that is really amazing. They definitely did that on purpose because, or else they probably make it center. But this is, wow, that's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. The clock dedication was awesome. The board of directors here at the Walt Disney Hometown Museum was all up on stage, representatives from Citizen, and now it's time for us to make our way over to the Walt Disney Family Farm. It's time for dinner and I can't wait to see it. It's gonna be such beautiful lighting because it's just about sun setting. At the, the, the sun's just about to set and uh, we're gonna enjoy some good food. And here it is, the Disney Family Farm, and this is the house that they uh, lived in. Now, the Disney family doesn't own it anymore. Kay lives there now, but that is such an awesome story that you can learn uh, over at the Walt Disney Hometown Museum. But uh, the event itself is going to take place like on the farm itself. So it's going to be over here where all these tents are, but we're going to be basically walking Walt's footsteps. We're going to be going and tracing and walking through parts of his favorite place. Like this is where he loved just running around and enjoying the nature. So it's going to be really amazing that we're here. This is so amazing. We're just walking around the Disney family farm right now. I, like these, this is where Walt would be walking around. This is, it's beautiful here too. This is so beautiful. Look at this. Right down there is uh, the Walt Disney Barn, and then the Dreaming Tree should be back here. And it's so cool because the Dreaming Tree uh, was so important to Walt when he uh, eventually got to purchase this land back because that's what had to happen is uh, he bought back his family farm and he wanted to kind of preserve it. And uh, once he did, he walked in and went straight back and he went to see if that Dreaming Tree was still there. And when when he got back there he said oh thank god it's still there and that is such an uh, that you know what i mean that just shows you how much it meant to him right over here is going to be the dreaming tree i am so excited look how beautiful this is this is just us walking around this is oh i love it and this is open to the public you can just come here and actually just walk down and stay on the pathway but uh yeah right here this is where the dreaming tree was. And uh, it's sad that it's gone now. It was here and uh, it's here for over 120 years. It got struck by lightning and then eventually fell down. And you know, this is like I said, the thing that Walt wanted most when it came to this farm. You can see him actually at the dreaming tree right here. Isn't that so amazing? And now since that one's gone, they planted a new one. And look at this one, it's growing big. It is so beautiful being here at the family farm and uh, they're going to be starting up the festivities soon so lots of people will be joining up and uh, yeah I can't wait to just kind of hang out here and mingle. Right over here is Walt's barn which is so beautiful look at this and they have little fact sheets just over here you can read up on some of the history but this is so beautiful. They preserve this so well. The barn that was on this property when Walt was a little boy, he was very, very fond of it, and he actually built one similar to this in the backyard of his home on Carrollwood 
Avenue in uh, Homeby Hills, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. And he loved this barn. When he was a little boy, he, they moved here in 1906 when he was only uh, just, just barely five, six years old, five years old, four years old at the time that they moved. And um, he spent a lot of time running around this farm. Of course, his brothers had to work the farm with his dad, but Walt was lucky, he was too little, and so this was his playground. Come to go inside, and people have been signing the walls in here with messages to Walt and drawings of all the Mickey Mouse and all kinds of things. So please go inside and take a look at it, and please sign one of these uh, boards here. We have one here that's uh, from the, for the D23 group. All right, the moment has come. I'm going to sign my name to one of the pieces of wood here, and it's gonna end up going inside the barn. We're gonna go inside now and uh, take a look at it. Wow, you ain't kidding, there is no like blank space left really. <laughs> wow. And then look at that view. And Daniel. It's a little hot in here though. A little steamy. That's Missouri. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys have ever uh, signed your name in here. Look at some of the Mickeys in here. Look at this one. Wow, that's so cool. I like this a lot. That is so cool to just be exploring around here. Now it's time to head back up near the front area and uh, get some dinner. Dinner on the farm. Wow, look at that. Mickey and Minnie are out on the farm. I see them all the way up there. This is cool. Well, this is really awesome, but Mickey and Minnie are driving through the Walt Disney Farm right now. Oh! <laughs> yeah! It looks like Mickey and Minnie just stepped out and Donald and Goofy are now doing photos on the farm. Photos on the farm. Look at this. I had to come up and say hi. On the farm, on the farm. Look at us, look at us, look at us. <laughs> I know, Marceline, the water tower. This is, this is, uh, this is incredible. I love it. Uh, can we do a cool photo? Let's do a nice little photo, huh? Let's do it. <laughs> this is what we have to look forward to tonight. We have a storytelling with the author of Eat Like Walt, which is actually what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be eating like Walt, and then we're going to have a cheers to Walt with a scotch mist. And then it looks like we're going to hear from uh, Brett Irwin, the uh, voice of Mickey Mouse. And then they're gonna do a kiss goodnight, a fireworks display right here on the Walt Disney Family Farm. Wow, this is gonna be amazing. <laughs> this is truly amazing. I love it here so much. And we didn't even get to dinner yet. I can't wait to see the sunset and then see the fireworks in the sky. It's gonna be amazing. We got some live music, look at this. Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back Ain't much of no country boy like you can't hack Curly rice, curly in the sack I Thank God I'm a country boy our menu for this evening is going to be a little bread service, um, Walt's relish tray, and then we're going to have fried chicken. Fried chicken and then Fufu's green beans, corn on the cob, mashed potatoes with a little pixie dust, and then we're going to have Floral's apple pie. Oh, this is going to be, this sounds good. Scotch mist, that was Walt's signature cocktail. At Disneyland, I discovered a memo of everything that was to be stocked in his apartment above the firehouse. And it was nuts and crackers and, you know, the different booze, but it was definitely black and white scotch. That was his preferred brand. That is what he had at Disneyland. Everyone raise your glass. So as I said before, we are in this very special place. This is this very special drink that Walt really enjoyed. And so here is to Walt Disney. Here is to another hundred years of the Disney Company. And here is to all of you. Cheers. 
Cheers. Napa. And the McMurray one. And so the boys and Ruth were not allowed to have butter because they had to save it all for the customers. So just butter your bread and we'll turn it upside down and dad will never know. <laughs> so you all have to take your butter out. Oh, okay. But, but before we do that, Kay and I thought you might like to hear Walt Disney himself tell you about what happened with his mom's butter. So John, can we please play the cue and listen to Walt? Well, things got pretty tough on the farm. It was pretty hard to get along. My mother made very good butter. My mother was uh, uh, but the grocery store she used to take it to to trade for things. We put my mother's butter in a separate place because it was good and everything. You know, a lot of these farmers, I mean, you've got to be careful to be flies on them and things, but not my mother. And she made good butter. So we put a little butter on the table and everything. And everybody's supposed just to have a, a start test for real little cut. But mother used to take her bread when dad wasn't looking, she'd butter it and turn it over and pass it over to us. <laughs> so we sit there, dad, and look, there's no butter on the bread. We just load it underneath, you know. <laughs> so what wow. I'm going to do now is take your butter and the bread out. There's a little knife in there, and we want you to butter. The wow. Bread. It is definitely getting hot out on the farm and being under here. But they did supply us with some fans, so gonna be fanning away here. Look at. Oh, now this actually feels even better. Out on the farm, drinking some scotch. We've got the fan, you know. I like that. Look at this. Glass bottles of Cokes. Cheers all the way through. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Just a couple of fellas. A couple of fellas enjoying some Coca Cola on the farm. <laughs> yep. I definitely feel like I probably got a little sunburn today. Right? I feel it. But Cokes are uh, always making me feel a little better. I am so excited for the food to come out. We've been snacking on the salads and the breads, and now they're playing more music. But it was cool to actually hear basically how Walt liked to eat. And this is accurate. I mean, I would believe it. I mean, this is coming from the Walt Disney archives, so it's kind of really interesting. I had to step outside for a second just so I can really grasp the fact that I am Sitting on the Walt Disney Farm, watching the sunset, having dinner, listening to so much amazing entertainment, music, Disney historians, and this is real life. This is real life. It is such a beautiful sunset right now. I noticed a lot of people picking up their meals and bringing them outside, and that is exactly what I did. Look at this. This is our dinner. We are going to eat like Walt on the farm right now and watch this sunset happen. This is, this is so amazing. I am now officially adding this to one of the coolest things I've ever done. This is, this is pretty remarkable right now. I honestly, I'm feeling like overwhelmed. It's, it's really, really special. And uh, we got the chicken. The sunset's amazing. Look at this. I'm going to try the mashed potatoes. Give them a go. Wow. I'm not even joking when I say this is just one of the coolest experiences I have ever got to do. Now we gotta try the chicken. I can also confidently say this is one of the best meals I've ever had. I'm not, I'm not just taking into like saying this is the best cooked like food for me. I'm talking about the overall experience definitely one of the best meals I've ever had. The fact that I am sitting here just watching this beautiful sunset and this is exactly where Walt Disney used to run around and play. He used to go swimming. This is incredible. Like <laughs> just so much you know inspiration has come from this land and I really hope it continues inspiring people for years to come. Good evening friends. I'd give anything to be there with you, but this seems to be one of those times I'm tied down here at the studio night and day. Well, it came about when my daughters were 
very young, and I, Saturday was always uh, Daddy's Day with the two daughters. So we'd start out and try to go someplace with, you know, different things, and I would take them to the merry ground, and I took them different places, and as I'd sit there while they, uh, they rode the merry ground, did all these things, sit on a bench, you know, eating peanuts, I felt that there should be something built, some kind of a, an amusement enterprise built where that the parents and the children could uh, have fun together. That sunset was amazing and my meal was so good. The fried chicken was phenomenal, the mashed potatoes, the gravy, that was so, I mean everything, it was perfect. And now it's time to watch uh, some fireworks, a, a, a little good night kiss right here at the Walt Disney Family Farm. And with that, we are done here today. I couldn't have asked for a better way to end the video. The fireworks were great. My whole entire day has been just so beautiful. Like honestly, I really was trying to, you know, rope in the video, but I was so excited about a lot of stuff and I was zoning in on things that I forgot that I wasn't like filming. Like I was just like, wow, this is so cool to be here. And uh, yeah, I mean, thank you to Citizen Watches and also to the Walt Disney Hometown Museum. They put on a beautiful dedication. It was really awesome. And uh, like I mentioned, if you want to donate to the Walt Disney Hometown Museum, I'll put a link in the description. And we are done here. We're going to keep moving along though. And uh, I'm on the road still. We're going to do a couple of more travel videos before I end up back in Florida. And uh, I'm, in, uh, I'm in New York City right now. Look at that just outside my window. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.